I remember in 1977, I think it was, going to see The Clash at the Lyceum in London, and I walked all the way home 10 miles. Don't know why, I could have got a bus, but uh, <laughs> my friend and I walked all the way home. One of my favourite bands of all time, uh, The Clash, and um, we, we saw an article about former drummer from The Clash, Terry Chimes, who'd returned to the Roman Catholic Church, and The Clash, Catholic Church, also C.S. Lewis, the British writer, was very influential in his reconversion. And this just screams out Michael Corrin. So we got him in studio in London. Terry Chimes, welcome to you. Thank you. The years in the clash, uh, it must have been life transforming for you. Well, a lot of people over the years have said, I would love to have been in your shoes all those years. But of course, they don't know what it's like. Um, yeah, great fun, very interesting, exciting, but also lots of problems, lots of arguments, lots of screaming at each other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are so many books written about the, the life of a rock star, because you, you, you toured with Black Sabbath as well, didn't you? Yes. And uh, the temptation... That was fun, because I'd played with... I'd listened to them as a kid, so, yeah. you know, it was fun. Of course. But all the temptations... Well, I suppose many of them sound uh, extremely compelling. You know, drugs, alcohol, women, uh, that, anything you want in life, you're a hero to so many. But those temptations were real, I assume. Oh, they're real, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think everyone has their favourite... Uh, and, of course, fame itself is also um, a temptation and a, an addictive drug. Mm. Did you fall for all of them or some of them, any of them? Uh, well, the women, I think, were my biggest downfall, I would think. Yeah. Because after a few hangovers, you go off alcohol and drugs. I saw too many people drop dead, so it was the girls were more, more of a problem. All right. Now, the, the idea of, of religion playing a part in, 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 in the recovery or the coming to a normal life of, of someone who's known fame, we've just seen the the death of a great actor, for example, through drugs. He seemed to have everything, but it wasn't enough, and he looked for an alternative. But you've now written a, a, a book where you've, you've spoken about your return to the Roman Catholic Church. Uh, quite a few people who come out of music who do find religion seem to become evangelical Christians. I suppose that's more the American approach. But you, you return to the church of your birth. Is this right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. I think that the people are looking for something to fill a hole in them and they look for the drugs and the drink and the girls and that doesn't work, they look other ways. And I think it's the hole that's God-shaped, it's made for God and it, you won't really ever be happy till you've found that. Mm -hmm. Some people, of course, never find it, they keep looking in the wrong places. Yeah. How, how did your, your friends, your contemporaries react when this occurred? Well, this was after music. I, I reconverted at the age of, uh, oh, um, what was I, mid-40s. So yeah. I'd gone beyond all the music by then. Um, I think back in the day, I was playing, I was reading books about spiritual things. I was doing meditation and so on. And um, I think I just thought I was a bit of an oddball. But then most musicians are a bit odd. So, you know, uh, no one really was worried about it or and no one was interested really in joining me in it either. Yeah. I mean, I understand this, it was more recent, the, the, the reconversion, but even so, your contemporaries are still your contemporaries, and we're almost the same age. And, and it's, it's not very fashionable in, in your mid or late 50s to say, oh, I, I think I'll go back to the Catholic Church. People just, they look at you as though, what, what's wrong with you? Yeah, I, I, but I, very, very early on, Michael, in my life, I realised that you can't worry about what other people think, otherwise you'll go nowhere and do nothing. Mm. So I've always used to disregarding anyone else's opinions. <laughs> good, good, good. In fact, when you do anything in life, people line up to tell you you can't, it can't be done. My, one of my favourite quotes in my, my book I've just written is uh, from George Bernard Shaw. Those who say it can't be done shouldn't get in the way of those who are doing it. That's very good. Now, by the way, we're giving away a copy of the book, so if you go to our website, uh, you can go there and, and, and get hold of a copy. You probably have to win something or answer a question, but I'm not sure of all the details of that. I also want to ask you, Terry, you, you, you mentioned that... C.S. Lewis, a great British writer, uh, he died in uh, well, the same day as Kennedy in 1963. And people might know him through Narnia or the movie Shadowlands. Yeah. That, that his, his work was very influential in bringing you back to the Catholic Church. Oh, it was like a sledgehammer straight over my brain. It was, it was, it was the moment 
is, is, uh, his book, um, Mere Christianity, which I bought years earlier, along with a job lot of interesting looking books at a boot sale, which I got dragged to by my mum, and it sat on my shelf. And then one day I, had, I was drawn to it very powerfully and I read it. And I got to the chapter on the great sin and it said, uh, pride, of course, is the great sin. Mm. And if you um, do some good things, uh, such as not drinking, um, being a good person, doing some charity work or some spiritual stuff, uh, and if you think you're better than other people by doing that, you're in a trap and the devil will wring his hands with glee knowing he's got you in a trap that you, you could hardly ever escape from. And those words just hit me like a ton of bricks. They just... My blood ran cold. I thought, oh, my God, for 20 years I've been doing that. And that was the, the thing that pushed me over the edge wow. when all the walls just collapsed and I realised the way things really are. Incredible. Well, I'm interviewing the former drummer from The Clash who's returned to the Catholic Church after reading Mere Christianity. So I think I can probably end my TV career at this point. Terry, it's been a real pleasure. I urge everyone to buy the... <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Go and buy the book and you can get one copy, of course, on our website. Terry, thank you very much indeed. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's not out till the summer in Canada, but you can get it on um, Amazon or whatever they call it, Kindles and things. Oh, yeah, they, they can go to Amazon.uk uh, uh, and, and, and get an early copy. Believe me, it's done all the time. Yes. Thanks very much yeah. indeed. I'll say hello to Essex for you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>